right, in this lesson, we're going to take a look at cardiac enzymes. There are two cardiac enzymes that we're going to look, look at aside from troponin, and these are CK and CKMB. And CK stands for creatine kinase, and it's an enzyme, and it's found in uh, muscles, and it's specific to damage or inflammation. So whenever you have uh, some sort of uh, injury or trauma, um, so if this muscle damage or inflammation happens, this enzyme leaks in the bloodstream and it's detectable on tests. So the normal value is going to be 55 to 170 units per liter. And the th other thing that's important to note is that it's um, CK is not specific just to cardiac muscle, but there are these three variants called ISO enzymes and they are specific to different types of muscles. So CKMM is specific to uh, skeletal muscle, not just every muscle, skeletal muscle. CKMB is specific to cardiac muscle and CKBB is specific to the brain. The one that we're worried about today is a CKMB and also CK. Now CKMB uh, is something you're gonna wanna continue to watch with our cardiac patients. And for patients having um, an acute cardiac event, what we would expect is to get uh, cardiac enzymes on your patient, right? So if your patient's having some chest pain, radiating chest pain, you would expect to get uh, these three values, CK, CKMB, and tropes, troponin. There's a lesson on that, so go check that out. Um, but the one that we're worried about right now is CKMB. Normal value for that is zero to 2.4 nanograms per deciliter. And it's really uh, undetectable in most patients. But because CKMB is specific to that cardiac muscle, um, it helps us uh, test if there's some sort of heart uh, injury happening. So it's released into the bloodstream and it's usually detectable in three to six hours and often peaks at 12 to 24 hours. And it starts to return to the level in about one to, to normal levels in about one to three days. So the cool thing about this is it, um, it can actually help identify uh, heart attacks for some patients if uh, there's no troponin available. Like if there's, for whatever reason, you can't get a trope on your patient, um, you can send this out and this, this helps to get an idea if there was some sort of cardiac event going on. Now for this lesson, because they're so frequent, used frequently together and they're very close in nature, we're gonna do some comparisons between the two. But for special considerations, what we're looking at is what kind of, what tube do I use? You know, when I get my blood sample and send it off to the lab, we're gonna use green top tubes, the heparin ones. Uh, you're gonna use those and send those to the lab. Like I said in the last slides, it's not uncommon to send out a whole cardiac panel. Uh, and you can usually do that with your green top tube, but most laboratories uh, do this without a problem. But check with your facility just to be sure. What do we do if our CK or our CKMB is higher for our patients? Well, the first thing we want to do is look at our patient, right? Uh, we want to see what kind of injury ha they have. If they're there for a trauma, you can expect that CK to be high. Um, if they're having some sort, um, you know, it's usually because of the like skeletal injury, the skeletal muscle injury, and that's going to make the CK jump up. But if their CKMB is high and their troponins are also high, you might want to start to think about some sort of cardiac event going on and you need to pay attention to your patient. So for patients where you have specifically high elevations or elevations in that CK, specifically, it just indicates some sort of muscle cell damage. And it's not specific to any type. And what you want to do is compare that to your patient's clinical symptoms. Now, if the CK levels are low, what that could uh, indicate is some sort of muscle weakness or disease. So this could be like muscular... I can't spell. Muscular dystrophy is an example of why your CK levels will be low, but it's not specific to any sort of cardiac concern. Now, your CKMB levels should be low at all, usually at all times. That level is going to be elevated if there's some sort of cardiac injury. CKMB can go up for other instances like uh, kidney damage or kidney failure. Is another reason that CKMB would would go up. So that's why I'm saying you need to pay attention to your patient's clinical symptoms and the overall diagnosis, and then look at the labs and then the trends when you're looking at all these levels. For this lesson, we really focused on the nursing concepts of lab values and also looking at how cardiac cell damage 
can affect those certain levels and affect uh, as a result of decreased perfusion. So let's recap. Remember that CKMB is the one that we're looking at specifically when we're talking about cardiac tissue, not just CK by itself. Your CK can be elevated for cardiac injury, but it can also be due to some sort of skeletal injury. So you're going to want to look at your patient. And that leads me to my next point. Consider the symptoms of your patient and see if your patient, are they symptomatic? The CKMB is going to be used uh, if that troponin isn't available, which is really beneficial. And you're going to want to use your CKMB with your troponins and to compare these trends over time. That's our lesson on the cardiac markers. Make sure you check out all the resources attached to this lesson. Now go out and be your best selves today. And as always, happy nursing.